We are coming to you live from our studios here at the Association of African Universities, and you are welcome to another exciting edition of AU Talks brought to you by the AAU. And don't forget that you can join the conversation via our social media platforms, Association of African Universities on Facebook, and AAU underscore TV on Twitter. You can also join um, the conversation via our, our TV website, and that is tv.au.org. Um, I'll go for a short break, and when I return, I will let you know who my guest is and a topic for discussion. Stay tuned. Botswana Accountancy College is a business school that was set up over two decades ago to contribute towards the human capital development in Botswana and beyond. BAC has over 20 years diversified its product portfolio to offer accounting, business, leisure, management and ICT related programs at undergraduate and postgraduate levels, as well as consultancy short courses to augment professional skills. In achieving this diversification, the college has partnered with UK-based universities of Durban Sunderland and Sheffield Hallam University, as well as professional bodies such as SEMA, Beaker, AAT, ACCA, CIA, Cisco, Microsoft, SAP, ESA, and SIPS to allow our graduates to have a globally recognized qualification and be globally competitive. To learn more about BAC, contact us on 3953062 in Khaborone or 2410558 in Francistown or visit our website on www.bac.ac. Also, you can visit our social media pages on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. BAC, celebrating over 20 years of creating business leaders. Welcome back from the break. If you just tuned in, you are still watching AU Talks, brought to you by the Association of African Universities. And today we are discussing academic planning in universities. What do they do? What is their role? And why do we need academic planning as universities in Africa? And to help us do the discussion, we are privileged to be hosting one of our astute um, uh, lecturers or academics in the University of Lagos. And he is going to be my guest for today and he goes by the name Mr. Kenshiro Obafemi. You're welcome to AU Talk, sir. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you. So I believe this is your first time in, in Ghana? Yes. Great. Uh, at least at the AU Secretariat. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. this is my first time. I've had other um, engagements in Ghana, but um, it didn't have to do with the Secretariat of AU. Okay. All right. So we are going to discuss the relevance of academic planning in universities. Most of the time when you're talking about the university setup, we hardly hear about academic planning. How important is the academic planning unit in the university? Yeah, maybe I will start by just correcting this notion first mm. of all. First, mm. I'm a buffer communication and um, I'm in administration. Okay. I've been privileged to work in the University of Lagos for over 20 years, oh. uh, of which 17 were spent in the academic planning unit. Mm. Uh, we can't overstate the importance mm. and the need for academic mm. planning unit in any university system. In fact, it's at the nucleus, in fact, the core of okay, university, university administration. Mm. Um, academic planning is actually put in place um, by virtue of a mandate from the Nigerian um, Universities Commission, National University Commission, in the 80s, that every university should come up with a unit, mm -hmm. and that unit will administer the vision and the mission of the universities by way of resource planning, mm -hmm. way of quality assurance, mm -hmm. way of um, um, program development that will go along with to ensure that the objectives of the universities are met. Great. So let's look at the setup properly. Yeah. In terms of the investment setup, um, you know, when we, they want to put an investment together, is it, the is it the academic planning unit that is set up first to ensure that the quality processes in terms of programming and everything is done? Or is after the investment is running, then they decide to set up an academic planning unit? The way it runs with mm. us is that academic planning will be at the very beginning of the of, setup. Okay. Why? Because when you talk about the data collation and everything that needs to be projected to meet with the vision of the university, mm -hmm. it will have started mm. with the academic planning um, officers in place. Um, the, the, the interesting thing is that um, in the University of Lagos, at the University of Lagos, 
the academic plan is a part of the vice chancellor's office, office okay. which is still part of the mandate as received from the National Universities Commission. And what they do is the director of the academic plan is directly responsible to the vice chancellor. Mm -hmm. And um, if we now want to look at the very beginning of a university system, mm. the university must come up, come up with a, an academic brief. Yeah. And of course, some of the other necessary mandatory materials that needs to be submitted to the National Universities Commission mm. before the university is set up. So all of this will be prepared <laughs> at the academic uh, planning unit. Okay. So when universities are being maybe um, the, 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 established, uh, established and even the thought about bringing it up is mm. coming up, the NUC will receive all of this document, academic brief, the um, the strategic plan mm -hmm. of the universities will go to the NUC. They will evaluate that mm -hmm. and use that to determine whether this university is ready to run. Okay. And and that's one of the core of the university uh, academic planning unit. Okay. So how different is that from the division of academic affairs or directorate of academic affairs in the university? Yeah, it's. It's quite different mm. because the academic planning unit is having a global outlook okay. of the university operations. Mm. Of course, when you now come to the academic affairs unit, they are looking at the students' welfare, admissions, mm. um, things like records office, and other things that's having to do with the students. Mm. But of course, at the level of academic planning unit, the director um, aided with some of the subunits, mm -hmm. will have to be looking at how the resources of universities will be shared among the faculties, okay. among the departments, mm -hmm. among the units, mm -hmm. and also look at the strategic plan and how all the necessary things that needs to be done mm -hmm. to meet up with the objectives of university. They will have to put that in place. I, uh, instances even occur that you see the academic planning unit coming up with a measure of the performance okay. against projections. So that at the end of the day, how do we meet up with the, what the projections are mm. for the universities in, in terms of the objectives of, of the university? So the, this will be monitored. In fact, we can say that the academic plan is a controlling body mm. of all the operations of the university. university okay. Because they go directly to aid the vision of the vice chancellor mm -hmm. uh, in the operations of the university system. Mm. Okay, so then let, let's take it one after the other. What is the first thing? You know, now you know we have a lot of private universities coming up, um, other institutions as well. What is the first thing to take into consideration when you want to set up a university? Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting the way we have the private uh, institution of mm. private universities coming up now mm -hmm. because you know it's it resulted from the fact that government cannot do everything absolutely and then there's a need to get some private participation mm. in the in the process the good thing is that um the national universities commission in nigeria is set up to monitor and control the establishment of any university mm. so what they will expect is anybody consummating the idea of coming up with the university will have to submit every details mm. coming to do or having to do with the areas of focus of the university. Is mm. it going to be the conventional one? Is it going to be directed towards maybe technical okay. education, agri or petroleum, whichever area. Mm. We do have some of the universities just directing their own focus towards some specific areas. The commercial or the, the conventional one will have several faculties. Mm. And then, of course, what they will do is facilities to back up or to support the faculties they want to come up with mm -hmm. must be well articulated okay. in a plan. Mm -hmm. So that plan, the strategic plan, the academic brief will detail all of this and the course contents mm -hmm. of all of these um, courses that they intend to run. This will be submitted to the National Universities Commission. And the University Commission will review this. Mm -hmm. It will take time. They will even do visitations to 
those places, uh, the location of the university, mm -hmm. look at the facilities, the laboratories, the workshops, and see if it's meeting up to the standard that is expected of any university to run, mm -hmm. especially run whatever program that we're okay. looking at. So all of this will be monitored by the National Universities Commission before any universities can come up. Mm -hmm. mm. All right, and then also back in the university, we still have the academic board. And I'm asking these questions because we want to know the clear distinctions in, so we have academic board, we have academic planning, and we have the academic affairs. So is your unit or I don't know, is there any relationship between the academic board and academic planning? Do you do things in common? Yeah, yeah um, let me clearly mm. uh, distinguish those units you mentioned. Academic plan is administrative, okay. though it's the custom in Nigeria now is that it should be headed by a professor. Mm. Academic board exists in the faculties, faculties yeah. Headed by the deans, and then of course we also have the departmental boards mm -hmm. headed, uh, headed by the head of departments, and of course we also have the academic affairs mm -hmm. earlier mentioned, mm -hmm. which will be looking, which is equally administrative. Mm -hmm. We'll be looking at the affairs of the students, the admissions process, the records, the exams, mm -hmm. and all of that. Certification. It's, yes, mm -hmm. a certification of uh, the students. Mm -hmm. So, the academic planning unit, it will be separated from all of this because mm. they are at more at the center okay. and they are working directly with the vice chancellor. And the focus is to ensure that the mission and the vision of the university as articulated mm. in all, um, for all the faculties is followed through okay. uh, for, for, for the university operations. Um, I, I was privileged to work on the about five vice chancellors. And um, the importance of academic planning unit can also be seen in my university to the extent that you see that those that grew to become the vice chancellor mm -hmm. passed through this office. Okay. They, they, they will have mastered a lot of the operations of the university right there mm -hmm. uh, as the director of academic planning unit. Mm -hmm. And that will expose them to the nucleus of the university administration, even be, even before they go to maybe positions like um, deputy Jeez. vice chancellor okay. or the vice chancellor. Mm -hmm. About three or four vice chancellors actually went in that, 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 uh, they went through that le those levels okay. before they become the vice chancellor. And that helped them in okay. the administration. Mm -hmm. So it still goes to say, to emphasize the importance mm -hmm. of that office in any university. Great. And then also, you know, we have the, you made mention of the fact that the academic planning unit takes into consideration quality assurance processes in the university yeah. and making sure that the university stays within its mandate for which it was, it was established. But you go to most institutions now, we have directory for quality assurance, and then we have institutional advancement, and we still have the academic planning unit. So is it a duplication of effort, or mm. there are some clear mandates that must be run by distinct people? Yeah, it's, it's, it's evolving. Mm. What happened there is that um, academic plan unit used to encompass all of all this. All of them, okay. All of these subunits. Mm. The quality assurance, uh, resource plan units, mm -hmm. the... Um, Even estates. Uh, maybe well, physical planning. Planning, yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. In some universities, they still have all of them together. Together. Okay. Now, as time goes by, what was discovered is that these duties, these functions, are becoming enormous. Okay. In fact, um, in Nigeria, quality assurance was a subunit of academic plan unit of the National Universities mm -hmm. Commission. Absolutely. At a point, the and you see, saw it in their wisdom that the quality assurance unit should just be separated mm -hmm. and be focused on these quality assurance processes, uh, processes that mm -hmm. will be will help universities. Mm -hmm. So it was separated. Another director mm -hmm. was was appointed to handle the office, while academic planning still has they still, it still has its own functions. Mm -hmm. So all of those units are coming out of academic planning just to give more. Um, that's a concentration mm -hmm. and the ability to deliver for all the the units. Mm -hmm. So it's, um, for instance, in my university, it's, it's just about five years ago that we have quality assurance as, as a unit of mm -hmm. its own. 
used to operate under the academic planning unit. Okay. And that's the case with most universities around Absolutely. us. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So do, do you think that a time is coming that um, the academic planning unit may not necessarily be that relevant in the universities because now we have the subs mm -hmm. doing all the key things? I don't see that happening. Okay. That's because academic planning unit, the functions are enormous. Okay. I've mentioned resource control. Mm -hmm. We've mentioned even no, the resource aspect control of now is done by the director of finance. Not really. Not really. Okay. Yeah. The the resource control handled at the point of academic planning units is looking at what will be the yardstick of distributing resources to the subunits of the university, acad um, academic departments, faculties, mm -hmm. and so on. So, and all of this sometimes we have to do with the number of students enrolled. Okay. And then there's what we also call full-time equivalent um, figures, mm. which will be which will come up as a result of the enrollment of the students, mm -hmm. as well as the resources taken up by the students mm. in in these de departments. So you may have, for instance, a hundred students enrolled, say, in English department, mm -hmm. but the full-time equivalent probably will give more credit mm. to that department. Why? Because apart from the 100 students enrolled for English in that department, you have about a thousand other students mm -hmm. coming to, sh to get resources from English department. So full-time equivalent will take cognizance of such okay. resources that mm. is being released by the department, such that when you are going to give resource allocation to the department, you will have to consider the load that they carry. Sure. So invariably, Academic planning resource allocation will have to do with that. Mm. It is based on what the academic planning um, setup has recommended that will now be financed or okay. powered by the finance that Bostry will now have to okay. deploy. Okay. You know. So when, for instance, um, the University of Lagos, uh, University of Lagos, which happens to be a federal university, allocation will come from the government, and when this allocation comes it just doesn't stay at mm. the center. It has to go to the various units of the university. Mm. So this distribution must follow what is the resources mm. and what is really required, the mm. needs required by those units, mm. such that you don't underpay or under, I mean, should pay some of, mm. the university, some of the university units that is really needing more than others. Okay. I just gave an instance of uh, English department. You may have some other units that are not really servicing sure. other students. Mm. They are probably just having their own students. So the resources they would need will mm. not compare with the resources of the departments mm -hmm. that servicing a lot of other students who are probably having borrowed courses mm. in those departments. Okay. Mm. Our guest today is Mr. Obafami, and he is from the University of Lagos. We are still discussing the, the role or the place of academic planning in African universities. We'll go for a short break. We'll be back. Are you an institution or individual? Do you intend to organize a memorable event to be archived for future reference? Then look no further than AAU Studios because it's your best bet. With our spacious studio and state-of-the-art media equipment such as 4K Panasonic video cameras, Kinoflow lights, assorted microphones, live streaming machines and others, you are sure to get the best of production. Visit us at Trinity Avenue, East Lagos, adjacent the National Accreditation Board or contact the AAU studio via the following addresses. Info at aau.org, aautv at aau.org, ransford at aau.org. Alternatively, you can call us on 0244-185-998 or 0244-6 Welcome back from the break. Don't forget that you can still get interactive with us via our social media platforms, AAU on Facebook and then AAU underscore TV on Twitter and also via our TV platform and or our TV website that is uh, tv.au.org. We still have Mr. Oba in the studio and we are discussing academic planning in African universities. So, sir, before we went for the break, we we're looking at some of the critical issues. But most importantly, because academic planning looks um, at the university staying in their mandate. Now, when you look at the current trends in Africa and globally, universities that were established for a specific mandate are moving beyond their, uh, their regulated exactly. <laughs> because we need to 
look look out for more resources to cater yeah. for yeah. the 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 staff and other yes. infrastructural needs of the yes. universities. What what do you as an expert? What do you make of such shift in our institutions? Well, some of them are quite justifiable mm. because you could see a university that is starting out as an agri university. Mm. For instance, there is one popular university in Nigeria, University of Agriculture, located in Abeokuta. Mm. They started without anything called MBA. Okay. Mm. They, along the line, they realized that some people desired mm. to really come and learn how to do a great business okay. and manage a great business. So invariably, the demand was coming. So they now saw the need to go into how to get business managers mm. to now couch the, the programs that will address that issue mm. such that you can have a Greek business management okay. as a course, as mm -hmm. a program. So that's an instance. We do have some others that it's born out of the need mm -hmm. of that environment. Mm -hmm. But then the, the, devi the deviation will not be such that we take them totally off course now. Mm -hmm. So a specialized university for agriculture shouldn't be seen uh, going totally out of Greek into into law into law for instance and that is what is happening we have some going into law some into <laughs> medicine <laughs> it and, uh, and other disciplines <laughs> yeah i don't think so in fact mm. what should happen is that so university will have to go back to the initial mandate mm. and then they will have to review that with the controlling agency mm -hmm. and probably take approvals before they go to that I, I, and i think that should happen before they even launch it because mm. one of the major functions of the academic plan is to ensure compliance, mm. compliance of the university to the initial mandate given by the controlling agency, mm -hmm. as the case is in Nigeria National Universities Commission. So the idea is that the university commission must see that you are not deviating mm -hmm. from the mandate you're given as a university. And how do they do that? They come regularly to do what we call accreditation. Sure. They come to do some visitation. And when they do all of this, they are trying to monitor mm. what is going on in the university as whether it's conforming mm -hmm. to what um, it, it's been established for. So I don't think it will be okay for universities set up for specific, for some reasons, mm -hmm. deviating totally out of that line for something else. Outside, except of course, when we have demand that is still in line mm -hmm. with the vision that the, the, the initially started with. Great. So, a classical example, let me use your university, University yeah. of Lagos. Should your vice chancellor or the academic board um, decide that we need to offer a certain program, and academic planning unit knows that it is off the, the mandate of the university, how will you offer your advice or expertise in that regard? Will Great. you inhibit the process or will you allow the process to go through? <laughs> That's a good question because the academic planning also play this advisory role mm. to the university management or the university vice chancellor. And they do it in such in, they do it professionally. Okay. That is to say if a program is coming and the program, the content and all that has to do with it will have to come to the academic planning unit, then mm -hmm. probably to the Senate before it goes to the NUC, the controlling agency. What they do is to ensure that this program will have facilities to support it. Okay. And of course, it's not totally deviating from the mandate, mandate of, university. of university. But let me just say that a conventional university like University of Lagos, mm -hmm. When it's conventional, that means you are can free do everything. to sure. do almost everything you have capacity to do. Sure. So in our own case, all we need to be sure or to be sure of, as from the, uh, the academic planning office, mm. is that the the the, the, the required um, um, resources mm -hmm. to available. power the program mm. is available. So you won't overtask the academic resources, for instance. Neither will you over overtask the infrastructural. Mm provision around. Mm -hmm. So if there won't be enough classes, enough laboratory, enough um, workshops to support such programs, they'll be so instruct I mean advised mm -hmm. that this may this cannot run mm -hmm. unless you enlarge 
the capacity infrastructure, as infrastructure well. and everything in, of course employing we get more hands mm. and we have resources to get more hands mm. to ensure that this program will run and run effectively delivering well on its mandate it will, but, it will but be do we usually get that done because for example you see a lecture theater that should take 50 students and the university knows specifically that it can contain 50 students but throughout the enrollment process you will find 200 students in that same lecture theater, some are standing outside, <laughs> and then uh, the the PA systems are not working and things like that. Yeah. I, that do you really come to terms with that as, as a unit in terms of the statistics of the university and what is available and what is not? Yeah, from experience, it's, it's, it's happening that that's part of the uh, challenge or mm. challenges of, of the academic planning unit and part of the universities. Mm in Africa, uh, let me just say in Nigeria, you see that um, there's something we call carrying capacity at sure. the university. Mm. Some are forced out of their carrying capacity by reason of demand. Mm. Heavy demand of enlarging your enrollment a bit beyond what was, what is the carrying Stop capacity. It. Sure. Oh, it happens. Mm. So, and when that happens, it also will go a long way to take a toll on the facilities you have. And the quality of the and the quality education. of the mm. education that will be delivered, mm. the, the the real issue, <laughs> from what I'm saying, is that um, there may still be the need for more stringent rules to guide the mm -hmm. process, mm -hmm. and outside that, we also need to enlarge the university establishment, uh, pro, um, um, university universities that's in existence, mm -hmm. because you are seeing that for instance in Nigeria about two million candidates mm. are likely to, s we have what we call a unified central admission the exam process, process. Exam process. Mm. about two million could sit for the exam. Mm. And the universities in Nigeria put together may just be able to barely take about 50,000 50 students. Oh, okay. 50,000 mm. students, mm. not a million, <laughs> not, mm. not, never close to that. Okay. So you have disenfranchised or Yes, you just see that a great number of those who are qualified mm. to be in the universities mm -hmm. cannot just get there okay. because available spaces cannot take them. Mm. So it is now difficult for those universities mm. to be so restrictive to the extent that they can't go a little beyond what they, ha mm. what, what, what they are supposed to. Mm. But that doesn't mean that... They, they, they can only do this, actually, okay. in those faculties that can accommodate it. Okay. Let me give an instance of a uh, university college of medicine. Mm -hmm. About 150 students should be enrolled for the college of medicine annually. And these 150 students will have the facilities provided, I mean, to cater for them, mm. to cater for them. So the medical council is monitoring. Okay. National Universities Commission is monitoring, monitoring. them. Mm. And of course, the university too is on their toes to b ensure that they don't go beyond that number. Mm. Because medical education, you cannot toy with it. Mm -hmm. So for such, you will hardly see such a thing happening. Okay. But when we say, OK, English language mm -hmm. as a course, social, or studies. Social, uh, social studies. So the university may be a bit relaxed to just allow for a little more than what they can take. So I'm something. sure your unit must be the police officer in the university. That's what academic planning is, must actually. Be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but before we let you go, because yeah. of our time, yeah. th there's one key thing. I know you may have been hearing yeah. that uh, university graduates are not employable. They don't have what it takes. And most of the platforms that academics do have and stakeholders, the solution is that we must change our curriculum. We must review our curriculum. We must retool our education system. And it has been a bit difficult. F coming from your side, what do you think is the difficulty in changing or reviewing or retooling curriculum in the university system to conform to the current standards yeah. or trends? Indeed, you can't overstate that particular mm. uh, uh, matter. Because the current situation is demanding for a new way of teaching and mm. learning all together. Sure. And um, the University of Lagos has been swift to respond to this. Um, we have now, for instance, an entrepreneurship and skill development center mm. in the university, which is like turning every course to an entrepreneur. Okay. So 
if you are an English student, you must look at what is entrepreneurial in English. Mm -hmm. If you are an engineering student, you must think about what you can do with the aspect of engineering you're studying. Mm -hmm. And the university has gone all out to begin to retool the curriculum okay. to ensure that no student is leaving the university to the extent that they just live without having a knowledge of what entrepreneurship to okay. about what to do. In mm -hmm. fact, what the University of Lagos is making, especially under this current dispensation of, um, under the leadership of my current Vice Chancellor, Professor Toyin, what it's doing now is to ensure that once you are done with your university mm -hmm. degree, you already have a certificate of entrepreneurship skill that mm -hmm. you must have acquired along the line. Okay. So that once you are out of university, if you don't have a, a white collar job, even if you think in that direction, mm -hmm. you can just put this skill to use and become an employer of labor of yourself. I mean mm -hmm. yourself. Mm. Rather than just having to wait for somebody to, to employ you, mm. you can create employment. Thank you That's so much for joining us. My pleasure. <laughs> yeah. Viewers, this is the end of our discussion. I have been hosting Mr. Obafemi from University of Lagos, and he is specifically with Academic Planning um, Directorate and International Relations. My name has always been Kusisam. Keep watching our programs.